This is the story of Alaskan Slim Williams' 1933 dog sled and 1939 motorcycle trip from Atlan, 640 kilometers or 400 miles south to Hazleton. Slim Williams was a 50-year-old Alaskan dog breeder and mail hauler who left Alaska in November 1932 for Chicago to promote a future road to Alaska. In the 1930s, dog sleds were the only transport in many parts of northern BC, the Yukon, and Alaska. After breeding sled dogs for 30 years, he was the first to breed wolves with huskies, finding that 75% wolf gave the animal strength, speed, and most importantly stamina, and 25% domestic dog gave it intelligence together with the ability to recognize and obey commands. Slim arrived in Telegraph Creek in January 1933 in minus 40 degree weather to, without a tent, stove, or compass, and with only the stars and sun to guide him. From here to Hazleton, he followed the trail and slept in cabins spaced from 24 to 36 kilometers, or 15 to 24 miles apart. Because of the thick snow, Slim sometimes needed to walk ahead of his dogs all day to break trail, and then shoot a moose in the afternoon to feed the dogs and himself. One day he had snow blindness from the constant bright glare and had to rest two days before his sight returned. In Hazleton, in March 1933, Slim connected a Model T car's axles and wheels to the bottom of his sled to continue on roads to the Chicago World's Fair, where he met and had dinner with President Roosevelt's wife, Eleanor, who called him a tall Alaskan with riveting blue eyes just waiting for his next adventure. With the development of long-haul trucks in the 1930s, everyone in the Yukon and Alaska wanted a connecting road south. In May 1939, 59-year-old Slim Williams left Fairbanks with a big send-off to promote the road with 25-year-old partner Jack Logan. They left with 300-pound British motorcycles, a bike bridge for them to ride together, and Slim's dog. They carried extra fuel tanks, wheels, tires, extra parts and tools. Roads extended south to Atlin and from Hazleton South. Alaska and the Yukon businessmen believed the easiest and quickest road was to follow the telegraph trail from Atlin to Hazleton, from where the existing road could be upgraded. In 1939, no one could have predicted that three years later in 1942, how a feared Japanese invasion of Alaska would cause the road to be moved 500 kilometers or 300 miles east and leave the telegraph trail untouched just the way it was when Slim and Jack traveled it in 1939. The stories in papers and on radio of adventurers Slim and Jack scouting a new road south propelled them into celebrity status. So most business owners gave them free gas, lodging and food. Everywhere they stopped, Slim had plenty of wilderness stories that kept people enthralled over dinner and morning breakfast. The roads were either boggy with mud or strewn with potholes, which slowed them down, but they continued on and were greeted and helped in almost all communities they passed through. There were no dentists for months at a time, so they brushed with baking powder to prevent cavities and took a metal jar of strong whiskey and different sized pliers in case they broke a tooth or developed an abscess that needed a tooth extraction. In the gold mining town of Dawson City, they visited the RCMP detachment, which showed interest in their British motorcycles that had already traveled 640 kilometers or 400 miles and intended to go another 3,300 kilometers or 2,000 miles to Seattle. The Dawson City Mounties contacted other detachments along the route, including Atlin and Hazleton, to be looking out for the two travelers. Unlike the 1933 Atlin to Hazleton winter dog sled ride, when swamps, streams and rivers were frozen and covered with snow, Slim and Jack's summer ride involved pushing the bikes through bogs and swamps that sometimes needed corduroy cross bracing, and crossing fast flowing creeks and rivers that needed tree branches and even boats. From Atlin to Hazleton were narrow but mostly well-packed trails beside poles holding up the power line. So Slim and Jack easily rode along sections that did not have swamps or streams, especially in the alpine above the trees. The sound of the two motorcycles kept away the hundreds of large grizzly bears they saw during their trip. When they left higher elevations and passed through the valleys, they needed to cross fast-flowing creeks and rivers with their heavy 300-pound motorcycles by either walking the bikes through the streams or using cut trees as bridges and balancing the bike tires on logs hoping it did not fall off. In the spring, swollen rivers flowed quickly. In July 1928, eight years earlier, linesman Scott Ogilvie from the Echo Creek cabin eight kilometers south of Bobquin 
slipped into the swollen Ningensaw River and drowned while walking to meet another linesman to escort a 30-year-old Russian woman, Lillian Alec, who was walking the trail alone right through to the Yukon. In the 1920s and 30s, Lillian Alec was the only woman to walk the trail alone and became a curiosity. Wildlife was abundant through their entire trip, including moose, bear, caribou, and wolves. From Atlin to Hazelton, they saw an average of 12 moose every day, so they were able to eat hearty meals. Food cooked over an open fire outside one of the cabins consisted of a moose roast impaled on a stick and rotated for even, slow cooking, moose strips ready to fry, thick pancakes, and coffee. They remained healthy, having a dry, warm bed or floor each night in either the linesman's main cabins or one of the in-between refuge cabins located from 25 to 40 kilometers or 15 to 25 miles from each main cabin that the linesman kept for supplies and for sleeping while doing repairs during the winter when avalanches broke the 1/8 inch steel line. Because of the high snowfall and steep mountain slopes, there were more line breaks from avalanches between Bob Quinn and Hazleton than breaks in all other areas between San Francisco and Dawson City, Yukon. Over the wide, fast-flowing rivers, Slim and Jack constructed boat frames with bent branches, which they then covered with sleeping tarps that supported one of the 300-pound bikes and a person across the river and then returned for the other bike. To power the boat, they whittled paddles and continued to be resourceful in developing ways to cross swamps, thick forests, and waterways. This wide river appears to be the Iskut River, which was one of the only wide rivers they had to cross. Slim's husky blizzard got too close to a porcupine, which embedded quills in his nose that would become infected if not carefully removed. A dog was important in the wild, as it would detect the scent or sound of bears at night when Slim and Jack were sleeping, and the dog's bark would frighten away almost all bears. On the final days before Hazelton, they were met by horse riders and packers taking supplies along the trail to the cabins. They took their time before Hazelton and then entered town where they were met by the RCMP and town officials who welcomed them to their logging, mining and railway station town. They had completed the 640 kilometer or 400 mile Atlin to Hazelton Telegraph Trail, the only unroaded section between Dawson City and San Francisco. Like this northern Alaskan road completion, many new roads have been constructed through northern BC and the Yukon. However, because of its remote location, the original telegraph trail route is unique in the world and remains the way it was during Slim Williams' two 1930s rides. Plans are now for the government to rebuild the linesman's cabins for a future 640 kilometer or 400 mile hiking, horse riding and snowmobile trail.